righty, we'll get started. Obviously, you're all here because you're interested in keeping chickens in your backyard, and I could attest to the fact that it's very addictive. And once you do it, it's no going back. It's really great. It really is fun. Um, so we could start off with the breed description. Does, there are actually, the U.S. Poultry Association recognizes 65 breeds, but over worldwide, there's over 200. So what I did, because I do all the ordering for the Agway store, I picked breeds that I thought would be number one, winter hardy, and they'll make it through the winters. Um, number two, uh, friendly, more friendly. People are more, it's usually most of our customers aren't here to do it just for egg raising and selling. It's more part of the family. And it's just, um, since I do it all, I'll just pick the ones that I think would be good. And then every year I always add a little kind of different ones. Like on there I have like frizzles and silkies. Those are bantam, called bantam chickens. They're mini chickens. So they're smaller than regular chickens and they're kind of fun to have. But you have to keep in mind their eggs are very small. So the big question is how many eggs does it take to make scrambled eggs with them? Because I have silkies and there's a lot of little eggs. So. <laughs> So, um, and I also do the ordering for the year. I'll do one order that will come in in April and another one that will come in in May. And that way, the chickens have time to grow, develop their feathers, and be hardy enough to make it through the winters in New England. So I'll usually do two orders. I do the order in January, and um, I think my contact information is on the last page. And if there's like you do research and there's some kind of breed that I'm not bringing in and you really want, just email me. It's not a problem. I could usually add it in if you want it in the order. And my only requirement is it doesn't hold up the whole order. Because like I've had people ask for really exotic ones and then our you know, poultry breeder will say, well, if I get that, it's going to hold up the order by a month because they're hard to get. Then I don't add it in. But if you are interested, I could pretty much get any, any breed. So first one on the list is the Americana. They're also known as the Easter Egger. And their nickname comes from the fact that they'll lay either light blue or light green eggs, which is really pretty cool. Um, I have a couple of those myself. And they're friendly chickens. And you always know when they're laying because it's the colored eggs that come out. And they're the same as any other egg. There's no different. It tastes the same. It's just they lay colored eggs. That's why I like when you see white eggs in stores. That's a specific breed of chicken. It's not that they're any different. It's not that they're not fresh. It's not, you know, whatever. It's just leghorns are really good layers. And a lot of times it's leghorns that will lay white eggs. I mean, I have a Polish fancy. That one lays white eggs. But then, you know, say the barred rock will lay a light tan egg. It's just the breed of chicken, depending on what color the egg is. So um, the next one on the list is the barred rock. Those are also really good layers. They're good in the flock. They're good in the group, um, friendly. And then the next one is the black Australorp. They are really big, meaty birds, really good layers. I think they hold the world record for the most eggs laid in one year. And they're beautiful. They're all black. And then in like the sun, they almost look like a purplish black. So those are really, and very docile birds. Every. Um, Every group will have what's called the dominant, it's a pecking order, a dominant hen. It will probably never be the black Australorp because they're fairly docile. You had a question? Right, this just reminds me of something I saw yeah. on YouTube. This chicken breed from the Philippines that's literally all black. The meat is black, the bones are black. Silkies, the silkies, the miniature chickens, even though they come in like gold, uh, black feathers, brown feathers, their skin is all black. And they also actually have an extra toe. So, but you can't even tell unless you like raise up the skin and you could see it. So that's one breed that's like that too. Uh, the buff Orpington, those are another big meaty bird, really hardy and they lay really like a lot of eggs, good layers, friendly. A lot of times they will be the dominant one in the, in the uh, flock, but usually they're not like aggressive or mean dominant. They're just nice birds, very nice birds. Um, frizzles, that's one of the kind of different ones I brought in this year. I'm not sure if I'll bring them in next year. I think I might try like Polish fancies or something else. Do you encourage a mixed flock? I do. I definitely do. Um, I have all different ones. A lot of times I'll do two at a time. I mean, not everybody does that. Like I do two Bard Rock. I have two Black Australorp, two Americanas, like that. Um, but it doesn't matter because through attrition and all that, I'm pretty much down to one of each. And 
they're all good with that. Yep. Will this list change if it's colder weather? Um, no, actually, yeah. Because I've been doing these breeds for a long time and I basically have, have had or had all, all these breeds and even like the silkies, I just read how cool they were and I wanted to bring them in. I had so many people tell me you can't, they're not winter hardy. And then I started reading, really reading up on them and they have them in Alaska and I thought if they could do it, we could do it. And now mine are six years old and they're actually my only ones that still lay through the winter. I, because they have feathers going right down their legs, they're mini chickens, I think they don't expend as much energy keeping warm because they're just so feathered. They've been laying all winter for six years now. So usually chickens take off the winter, like a couple of months in the winter when it's really cold, after like two years. The first two years they usually, right through the winter they'll lay eggs. And then after that a couple of months they'll take off and then start up again. So uh, next one is Rhode Island Red. They're very good layers. A lot of people that's like, that will be their only flock. A lot of people do that. They really like the Rhode Island Reds. Silkies, I mentioned them. They're bantam chickens, small, and they just have feathers going right down their legs. They're really, really kind of cute chickens. Um, I think I might have had to fix your one here. So, yeah, I'm not sure you could see this, but this is one of my silkies. They're just total, like a, like a little feather ball. <laughs> just all, they're just small feathers, but they are very small legs. <laughs> yeah. So that's why whenever I order these, I do what I do is um, do pre-orders, and then whatever I have for pre-orders, I usually just double the whole order. So either people feel comfortable pre-ordering, their chickens are only $3.99 a piece. They're pretty reasonable. Um, that way you're guaranteed to get the breeds you want and what you want and you'll know when it's coming in within like, they always give me like within three days period of when you'll have it, the delivery time. Okay. Chickens or eggs? Chicks, baby chicks. They're a day old. They leave the poultry hatchery. It's like the day they're born, they're flown up because for the first like few days, they don't need food or water, believe it or not. The last, they get the plane right up here. I call the post office to warn them they're coming because a big box comes, I order like a few hundred at a time and they're loud let me tell you and I'll tell them they're coming and as soon as they get here I bring them right back really quickly to the store and keep them warm. Do they need to learn how to eat because I saw a video of a hen having to teach its babies how to eat. No you know but some of them when they come in they're just kind of over in the corner or they're not really getting it like so I'm always there for the first day they're there and if they're not I just pick them up if say that's the water, I'll just bring them over to the water and dip their beak in it. So like if you order them for me, by the time you get them, they know what to do because I'll just make sure that all of them are getting what they need to do. And like when they pack them, they pack them really tightly because they have to stay really warm. So sometimes we'll get like, the, the hatchery I deal with has been really, really excellent. And a couple of times we've had here and there a squished one or like when my son worked there, he made me take two that were squished in the corner and I brought them home and they're great and they're still laying, so <laughs> that stuff happens. So, okay, the only one I've left I think over is the gold sex link. So any chicken that has the word sex link after it means, I don't know how they do it, but somehow they breed them that they are guaranteed 100% to be female, so there is zero chance you will have a rooster. So some people want like no chance they're gonna get a rooster so they will order the gold sex links or in with others. The rest of the chickens, it's about a 90%, they guarantee 90% that it'll be female, but you're, there's always a 10% chance you'll end up with a rooster because they're sexing them when they're like less than 24 hours old. I don't even wanna know whose job it is or how they do it, but they're pretty good. Like when I got my first order, I did end up with a rooster. I had five chicks and I ended up with a rooster. And I also put on the back page too, there's a man in Western, really nice guy, uh, Tom Doherty. And if you end up with a rooster, or end up with an aggressive chick and end up with whatever, for whatever reason, you can't keep them, he will take them. He's a great guy. And he says he just sells them at a chicken auction. There's always farmers or someone that wants roosters or whatever. And they'll, he says he's never, he said sometimes on average, he'll get 40 chickens a week. So. So that's a lot of chickens, so he's great. So when I went to bring him my rooster, this is where the chicken math came in and then I felt kind of bad. 
And so then I knew someone that got chickens the same time as me, and they're like, oh, I have too many. Come get one. And then I came home with three of theirs somehow. <laughs> And then I came home with some squished ones the next year that my son made me bring home. That just, that stuff happens. Do you recommend them? <laughs> Do I recommend them? It all depends. Um, like, actually, this is, sounds really bad. I have four children, and we didn't know we had a rooster at first. Um, but it was doing, it kind of, they crow. They don't just crow in the morning. They kind of crow off and on all day. So I would get up, you know, around 7, and I would hear it. And I'm like, oh, must see me in the window. Oh, my God, that's kind of cool. And I knew the neighbors next door retired. And the other neighbors had little kids. So I thought, well, they told me they like hearing the crowing. And then the people on the other side had little kids. So I'm like, well, they're up early. And then finally one day the neighbor with the little kids called me and said, um, I hate to complain, Lisa, but your rooster. And I'm like, oh, I'm sorry. So she had four in the mornings a little early. We were all sleeping through it. I never heard them. <laughs> so that's when I brought that one to Tom. And multiple roosters still fight with the rain. Yes, multiple roosters will fight, yeah. They can't do it. They can. They could hurt each other, yeah. Yeah, so when I had mine, it was fine. I kept all, you know the flock in order and if I let him out in the yard when I was in the yard they'd all come back and then when I gave him to Tom my rooster for a while it was kind of strange they wouldn't listen I couldn't get him back in I'm chasing him to get him back in but then one of my buff Warpingtons took over as the dominant one and that was it they all she'd go in they'd all go in so kind of you'll, you'll work through it all so that is the breeds and then next is all the requirements. Now, each town is different, so that's why I gave you the handout for Chelmsford. If you're from like Westford, another town, I recommend calling your Board of Health. They'll tell you exactly what the requirements are. And the way Chelmsford does it, they want you to call them first anyway, just to make sure with your property you have enough room to have chickens. So just check with that first, because you don't want to get chicks, be really attached, and then find out, oh, you can't have them. That would be kind of a little upsetting. So, okay, so now we'll get into, you decided you're getting chicks, you research the chicks, you know what breed you want, you either pre-ordered or from the Agway website or whatever, you'll know our website, our Facebook page, or if you come to the farmer's market in the winter, we'll be doing another chicken talk during then. Um, you'll know when they're coming in. So you got your chickens picked out, you know what you're doing, now you have gotta get everything in order and get ready. So the first thing you need is a brooder, which is where you're gonna put the chickens which this part's really easy. I just went to Market Basket and said, can I have a big box? And they said, come, we already crushed them all for the day. Come back the next day and we'll give you a big box. I got a big box. When they got bigger, I went back, got a bigger box. It's just a cardboard box about this high. And I didn't have a top on at first, but one morning I came down and all the little chicks were lined up on the side. So I put a little netting over the top. <laughs> Luckily, they weren't anywhere else. They were all just right there. Um, and then the second time when I got the second batch, I definitely had the top on because by then I had cats. And I put tape across the hole and they just like put their eye up like watching them, but they didn't, they didn't do anything. <laughs> and my dog didn't mind. He just for some reason didn't like the smell of them. He'd smell them and walk away. But he was used to them. Like, so he, it was a big lab. Lie outside and they'd all just come around and fine because they were used, you know, the, the dog was used to the chickens. So that was fine. So you'll have your box. Just make sure it's draft free. I mean, I wouldn't put it somewhere freezing or where it's gonna get wind. I mean, I put mine in a mud room. Some people do their basement. So just somewhere that's draft free, you could protect them from anything, maybe netting on the top so they don't fly out of there. And then, um, let me see, next one is the bottom, pine shavings. So some people think newspaper would be good. It's not, they'll like, slip on it and they get a thing called weird splayed legs where the legs will go out and one will be stuck and you gotta like tape them in. You just, you don't, you don't wanna have to do that. So pine shavings are great. They come, it's really condensed. It's in the, like this high, a big bale. kind of bale kind of thing. And when you go, if you, if you get them at Agway, um, you won't see them, they're out back. What you do is just tell them it's a big bale this big and a, and a little, uh, you know, a little paper container, very condensed. It, when I clean my coop, it fills my whole coop, all the nesting boxes, and I still have like that much left. So even though it looks like, oh, can I do my coop? You could do your whole coop in it easily, and it's $7.50. Everything about chickens except the coop is really inexpensive. I mean, they're 50-pound bags of feed, 
If you go regular feed, it's under $20. If you want to do organic, it's under 30. I mean, it's just in that, depending on how many chickens you have and how much scraps you feed them, it'll last. It definitely will last a while. But the, the pellets and all that should be their main food because it's got their protein and that's what will get their eggs producing. So it's the protein part that counts. So, okay, so pine shavings. And then the next, this is really important, is the heat lamp. When they come in, they have to stay really, really warm. So some places you go, you know, online, it tells you get a thermometer, keep it exactly this temperature. I've never done that. I just get a heat lamp. It's like this. You come like this, and you could just attach it. I had attached it to, like, um, one of those standing lamps, attached it, did it with wire, everything. You don't want it falling because they're hot. Um, and you use a red bulb. Red seems to just calm chickens. I don't know what it is, but it just keeps the chickens nice and calm. And it'll keep them warm. And what you do is you set it up where you want it, put it in, and this is how you can tell the temperature. If they all huddle under it and they're like right below it looking up, they're cold. So move it down a little. If they all go to the edge of the box, they're hot. So move it up a little. It's just that easy. You don't need a thermometer. So when you get it right, and they're all just milling about eating and doing their thing, then you got it right. And then every few days, just raise it up a little, raise it up a little, until you know within a few weeks you won't need the heat lamp at all. But they'll, they let you know, do you know what I mean? If they're cold, they'll let you know. They'll huddle right under it like they're freezing. So, so that heat lamp is the most important thing, because without the heat, they will die pretty quickly. OK. Um, the feed, that's the big one. So when I get the chicks in, some people get chicks vaccinated. Mine do not come in vaccinated because I feel like this is all backyard people. They're not going from one farm to another farm and bringing something in. So they're not um, vaccinated because it's only if you're really like going to someone's farm and tracking in your shoes and tracking it into your pen from some other farm, that's how they'll get something. So what I do is for the first, I'd say probably eight weeks old, there's different chick starters. I do the medicated. So there's something that they could pick up, whatever, from the ground. And it's, it's called, um, if I could even say it, so difference, Cassidius, something like that. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, it has it in there. It's, it's, not, it's not like an antibiotic. It's none of that. It's nothing like that. All it is is just it's, um, it's just an anti-coccidious drug in there. And it's just a thiamine blocker. It's used to prevent it. And it's not an antibiotic. So you're not giving your chicks antibiotics. And then I usually do that for about the first eight weeks. And then they're not going to lay until four to six months. So. I think it's fine. After that, I go to regular starter. So you could either decide, and they have them both in organic and regular. You take your pick. They both have medicated and non-medicated. So I normally start medicated for the first few weeks, switch over to the non-medicated, and they'll stay like that. And then the starter grow. Once they start laying, even one of your chickens, I switch them over to, it's called layer feed. I mean, somebody's laying. So you switch them all over to that. And then there's two different kinds. There's layer pellets, which are way more economical. They're just little hard pellets. And then there's layer crumbles, which are tiny pieces. I have silkies, and they're small. And they tend to really only be happy with crumbles. So I get the crumbles. They kind of make a mess and kind of get it all over. But I, so that's the difference between the pellets and the crumbles. If crumbles are more if you have small chicks, or if your chicks really, your chickens really like them. So you pick. It's more like when they're baby chicks, that's what it's like, crumbles. And then when they're older, you could switch them to pellets. OK. So that's the feed, the water. The water is a really big thing. Always make sure there's fresh water out there. Chickens could die pretty quickly if they run out of water and you don't know it. So always do that. And when you first get them, this would be a regular chicken's water. And this is for the baby chicks. Don't do this. They'll drown. You do this. Chicks will do these strange things when you get them where you're looking at them, and next thing you know, they fall over, and you think, oh my god, they're dead. And you touch it, and it jumps in the air. When they fall asleep, they fall asleep wherever they are. They fall asleep with their face in the food, with their face in the water. So 
they really do. You just touch them and they jump in the air. I mean, I get more customers come in like, oh, that one's dead. And I'm like, no, no, not really. I'll touch it and it'll like jump. So you, if you do this kind of water, they'll fall in and be dead. And this was the first year it happened in like eight years. Overnight, when I came in one morning, one had actually fallen asleep in the water and died. I mean, this is so low. I was surprised it's never happened before. So that's why you don't use the full size, any full size things until they're a little bit older. So for the chicks, you do this for the water. And then this is what the feeder looks like. And it just comes out the bottom in the holes and they'll eat it. But they'll fall asleep with their face in the holes. They just do. You'll come in and their face will be literally in it. I don't know what, I guess when they get tired, they get tired. So, but always make sure they have water because actually more chickens die from summer heat than winter, believe it or not. So just make sure there's always water. That is a big thing for them. So make sure. So when you first get them, like I said, you make sure they're eating and drinking. If they're not, it's easy enough. You just bring them over. If they just one seems like it's kind of off by itself, you just bring it over to the food or water and dip its beak, you know, in the water and it'll start drinking or put it near the food and it'll figure out, oh, this is good and they'll get going. So usually though, by the time you get them, I've already done that with all of them. Um, if you get them in April, it'll probably still be cold out. If you get them in May, it's a little warmer. Once they're a few weeks old, you could actually bring them outside for a little bit at a time and let them walk around the grass and kind of see things. And I had heard when I first got them, I didn't know they like mealworms. So I went to a store and got real ones and they all like freaked out and ran away from them. <laughs> what they really like when they're little is these little freeze dried ones. Um, <laughs> Of course, now that they're big, they'd love the real ones too. They love worms, anything, anything. I, I'll tell you, mine, one of mine, I was telling someone over here, it was late and then when it gets dusky, they all too, they have this internal clock in their head to go inside and jump on the roosting pole and go to sleep. It's just, it's just what they do. So one of my chicks wasn't going in chickens. This is when they're full grown. She's zigzagging in the front yard. I went to get her and right when I'm getting close, I see her throw her head back and a garter snake went down her throat. Yes. I didn't eat eggs for that week. I threw them out. <laughs> I don't know what I was thinking why I did that, but I didn't eat them for a week. <laughs> yep. At the time I rented them, I didn't know how to take care of them very much, so I just, I let them out of their hutch. It was a small window for the hutch. Yeah. Hutch for like about an hour a day. And I felt, and I kept telling myself I had to like keep a mind on them the whole time because I mean, they're smart enough to stay under the trees and bushes, but it's, so they There's so many hawks they, around. I didn't know if they were smart to actually come back. <laughs> they usually, because I've had, I've actually been outside and hawks will come down with me there. So um, they'll usually, they know I have some, you, you'll see it, it's really odd. All of a sudden you'll look over, I'll look over at my bird feeders and there's no birds. And there's a weird bird in the woods that makes this really weird noise. And I'll see all my chickens freeze and run back to the pen. I don't know, they get some kind of warning from birds. Yeah. They'll, they'll go under the bushes or whatever. Um, it's, everyone's different. I have customers that believe it's nature, you let them out, they should free range every day, and then a lot of them are back for more chickens every year, but I, mine are kind of like pets, so I let them out if I'm out usually, but there's a lot of hawks. Now, I've had my chickens for seven years now. This is the first time this happened. It happened only like a month and a half ago. Um, I ran inside, I don't know what I ran inside for. Honestly, I just got in, I turned around because something caught my eye movement. A giant hawk flew down, slammed one of my chickens. There were feathers everywhere. I think they just release them when they get scared. I went flying out the door screaming, I'm sure the whole neighborhood heard. And the hawk was on top of my chicken, it was big. And it just kind of turned and looked at me. It was deciding if I was enough of a threat, I think. And it took off, it ended up taking off. And my chicken, I ran over to pick it up, and I'm like, oh my God, it's dead. I'm so upset, it was my favorite, it was my Americana. Picked it up, the head was down, all of a sudden it just like literally popped up, floor of my hands, and it just went running back to the coop and ran in, and I ran in and got it and held it. Like one little drop of blood came out, that was it. But she wouldn't let me really touch her. She was too scared, and for like three days, she was like in a state of shock, just, stood, not even, wouldn't even sit down, stood on the roosting pole to come and take her out, feed her with a little syringe water, and I was giving her yogurt, and then after the third day, she kind of came to like she didn't even remember and was eating and drinking normally, but, but that's how scary, that's how many hawks, so I don't know, you know what I mean, I always used to let them out with my dog out there, and they'd never come, but since my lab isn't around anymore, I don't know, I thought it was me they were afraid of, I think it was my dog. <laughs> 
I just feel guilty all the time because when I, I don't know if it's me, I think they just think I'm the treat woman. I literally, everyone in the house could come home and they see the cars and do nothing. And then I come home and they all come running to the corner of the fence like, oh my God, mommy's home. And I think they want to come out, but they're probably just looking for food. They know I bring food up there and treats and stuff. I don't know. I mean, any what? Yeah, yeah. Well, what I have is I have, the way I have it, I have a coop, and then pushed against it is a big dog kennel, like six feet high. Pushed against it, cut out, and then like attached to the coop so that they could go in and come out. And then it's got chicken wire across the top. And then at the bottom, I went probably like this high up from the bottom. I took hardware cloth and dug all around the fence. I didn't, my sons did. And dug down about that deep, put it down and then out because they say if predators are going to come in, they'll go right up to the fence and dig. And that way, if they do, they're going to hit the hardware cloth. So I've never had anything get in ever. And then what I was doing was going in and going in through their pen and closing their little door at night just to be safe. And then I got really lazy and I got this little thing with a light, light sensor in their window and when it gets dark really, really slowly, it could never hurt them, the door, I have, like it has a little sliding door that you attach, it'll go down and then when the light hits it in the morning it opens so they could go in their run. <laughs> Because I'd be up in the morning with my kids, but Sunday was the only day, you know, and it's July and you know it's hot and they want to get out of, they really want to get out of the coop because it's so hot. I was feeling so guilty and I'm like, oh, I got to do something about this. So, yeah, it works out really well. Wow, they, they, they could wander. Yeah, when I let, I mean, they, they let out, they don't seem, I mean, they'll go around the edge of the yard. I mean, my neighbors know them. Once in a while they'll catch them and I'll go over there and they'll either call me and tell me or I'll see them over there. And I'll, Walk them back and. Yeah. So I've been letting them out, I mean, for like seven years. If, you know, usually either that or I'll see the hawk and then I'll yell and make them all go back in. I just get like a little rake and scare them to go back in. And that's always worked. No, no, come back. Oh, the hawks, yeah, the hawks, no. No, no the chickens still come in. Right? Yeah, they know to go in, yeah. Yeah, because I would let them out like usually after dinner because I don't know, I heard that hawks with shadows and all that, they're not as good at hunting. They'd rather hunt, you know, in full daylight. So that's the only time I'd let them out if I was working in my vegetable garden or flower garden. But it's kind of subjective. You kind of got to decide if you see a lot of hawks around or not or if, you know, if you're out there. I don't know. Or you could be the type that just says that's nature and let them out. I don't know. You know, it, that's why it's all a personal thing, what you want to do with your chickens. Um, Okay, and then what I do with my chickens, because I had them in a box when they were babies, I put a hole, I put this in here, I put a hole in each side and went outside and got a stick, made it like that high off the bottom, and that way they started learning to jump on the little pole, and then that way when they moved to the big coop, they knew you jump on the pole at night, and they'd always just go up on the pole, except for one, my Polish fancy that has feathers over the eyes and couldn't figure it out, so I made my husband make a ramp for her, and she climbs up. <laughs> Okay, and then yeah, after they're a couple of weeks old, you could start like experimenting with little treats. They like little treats, dried, not real mealworms when they're little, they'll be afraid. Um, yogurt, little things like that. I put a list of things, treats you could do, things that aren't good for them. Some of them are common sense candy. Um, potato peels, you know, anything salty. They, I have raw eggs written there and it's not because it'll make them sick, it will not make them sick. What it will make them do is start eating their own eggs and you don't want that. If once they kind of get a taste of it, you could make hard boiled eggs. I've done that when I've had way too many eggs and my neighbors don't want any more. And I hard boil them and just put them in a baggie, shell and all, and just like crumble them all up and throw them out there because they're not associating it with their eggs. And the shell's good for them. So I just do that with the eggs and throw it in. But raw eggs will make them want. I mean, I've done that before. I lift up the nesting box. One of my chickens had the most guilty look with like an egg dripping out of her mouth. <laughs> But, you know, usually, I mean, mine didn't keep doing it. It was just kind of a one time, I wonder what that tastes like kind of thing. But some people say if they keep doing it, you just take plastic, pull the eggs out as quick as you can and put plastic, like golf balls in there so that when they go to peck them, they'll say, oh, these aren't any good and they'll kind of break them of the habit. So, yep. Uh, some of the vegetables that you have, this was cabbage, uh, I'm sorry, cabbage, pumpkin squash, is that cooked or raw? Either one. Either one. Either one. 
Yeah, because I have a vegetable garden right next to it. I'd let it out. They'd go right in my garden. Do you think they want the tomatoes on the ground? No, they want the ones that are on the vine. And I go to pick them, and there's like big holes in all of them. <laughs> so anything like that, they love. Even like when I weed, when I weed my vegetable garden or my flower garden, I just get a bucket full of weeds. When I'm done, I throw it in the chicken coop, and they just love scratching around. And it's really weird. You'll come back the next day, and it's gone. They're like, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. They just scratch around, and it's all gone. If they eat some of it, or they just dig it into the dirt, or whatever. But you had a question? I do. Sometimes I just put it in like or a little paper plate, and but they'll all pack, and it flies all over. And the Polish fancy will end up with it like all over her feathers, and but they love it. <laughs> and then in the winter, I always feel bad because it's so cold out. Sometimes my husband complains because I'll make like hot oatmeal, and he'll be like, "Ooh!" And I'll walk by him and bring it out to the chickens. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, and then grit. Um, I didn't start using grit till they're a little older, and where the way my pen is, and they scratch everything up, it's just little stones, and it helps them because they put things in their gullet, and it helps things kind of stay digested. And some people give it to their chicks, but I don't think they're really eating enough to need that. But you know, when they're a few weeks old, you could try. I mean, they like eating it, and it's just something that keeps everything going. The other thing I have here is oyster shell. Once they're laying. That'll be good if you have like to make the shells a little bit harder. Sometimes you'll get an egg and it'll feel like not as hard or you'll touch it and it cracks. They just need more of this. So you just calcium. So you just can give them oyster shells or hard boil their own eggs and it's because it's in their shells too. You could do that um, after two weeks. Oh yeah, raising the water. I even did that in the box. I raised the water up a little because they just get absolutely everything in their water. They'll get shavings in their water. Mine are literally will stand on the edge of those, try and stand on the edge of the water and poop in the water. They poop everywhere they walk in it. So I usually raise it up just on like a block, the water, just so that they don't get dirt, shavings, everything into the water. And you, you know, then you don't have to change it as much. Um, okay. And then once they're about six to eight weeks old, and you see they're getting their big feathers in, because when they're day old, they're so cute, and their big feathers come in, and they just look like these like little mini dinosaurs. They, oh, they just look so odd with their feathers coming in. Once they're fully feathered, they could go out in the chicken coop. So that's like the only really, really big expense, I mean, of raising chickens. So, you know, there's all sorts of options. We sell, obviously, chicken coops at the store, and we could, you know, whatever you like, we could find it, order it. We always have a few in the parking lot. If you're handy at all, um, and you go on, it's, I put the website on the last page, through backyardchickens.com. People put the whole diagrams out. There's step-by-step -step instructions, material list. I mean, there's a wealth of information. That's like my favorite website. There's, that's where I researched all my chickens, too, is on backyardchickens.com. It's great. It's everything you could ever want is there. So if you're handy at all, that would be the cheapest way to do it. Uh, how do they deal with turkeys? How do they deal with... Um, I get turkeys coming through my yard. They kind of just all seem to ignore each other. Yeah, I yeah. that. Every time that there are some turkeys come by, they just come in. Yeah, yeah. It's not like they go look for them or they run towards them. They just don't do anything. Yeah, it's like they're not really interested in them. So the coop, uh, three to four square feet per chicken in the coop, 10 square feet per chicken, you know, on the outside run. We use everything from old sheds they make into the chicken coop to big dog houses to, I mean, so there's a lot of options or some, you know, Craigslist sometimes you'll see some on there or whatever, but that's like the biggest expense. After that, I mean, it's just so inexpensive because chicken feed's inexpensive. They eat all your table scraps. I mean, my kids wouldn't eat crust of bread or the ends of bread. I'd just throw it in the chicken coop. Anything. Even chicken. They'll eat, any, they'll eat anything. So. They'll eat tomatoes and uh, green tomatoes and waste. Yeah. Yeah. They'll eat all that. Even like when I'm in my garden and the tomatoes are like misshapen or rotted or split or cracked and anything, I just throw them in the pen and they love them. The greens off of your vegetables? Yeah. They're fine with that. Any yeah. restrictions on that? No, no, not really, no, no. Just the only thing that, like you said, like, um, like apples, the seeds can be toxic to them, apple seeds, but avocados and avocado pits are a no-no, and potato skins, but 
basically they literally will eat anything. I mean, I'd throw out mashed potatoes and you'd think they were getting like ice cream sundaes. They went crazy over it. And they're all different too, because like I've had one of the women that did the chicken talk said, oh no, chickens hate cabbage. In the winter when mine are bored, I'd hang from the um, top of the pen a bungee cord, put a head of cabbage on, and I come back in two hours and it's gone. It's just gone. They've picked at it and they're bouncing and chasing it. It's just to, you know, entertain them. But mine loved it. So they're all different. I mean, craisins. That's so weird. I did it by accident one time. I just had some, threw it in. They were like fighting over them. Or if you throw in, they love spaghetti. You could throw in a mound this big. One chicken will take one strand and run, and all the chickens will chase that one chicken <laughs> and try and get that one piece of spaghetti away from it. They do, they do that with food. There'll literally be a heap of it, and one will run, and they'll all chase it all around the pen and keep chasing it until one will get it out of its mouth, and then they'll chase that one. And that's just what they do. <laughs> um, I, it's just not good for them, I guess, and the pit could be toxic to them. Uh, potato skins, it's in there. I listed them. Yeah, so, I mean, all the chickens all, it's funny because you don't think of it, their like, heads are this big with their little brain, but they all have like personalities, they're all funny. I mean, I had one that, my Americana, when I'd come outside, she, if I sat down, she'd come over and jump on my lap. And it was just, they're all so different, you know, but then I have another Americana that I come over and she's half afraid of me and will kind of run, but if she thinks I have a worm, she'll kind of come back and she'll go back and forth. So they're all just really different. You had a question? Are there any backyard plants that will, one that they will eat and that will kill them or eat with the eggs? Um, you know, I'm sure there are. I would check on backyardchickens.com, but I mean, I let mine out and we have all sorts of rhododendrons, azaleas, everything around. And they okay. seem to know, like you'll see certain bushes and plants on mine, they just avoid them. Like they'll go through my flower garden, it'll be digging and scratching all over and some of them they just seem to avoid or don't go near, so. Uh, I heard if you don't have a rooster, they're easier to manage because they treat you as a substitute. Um, I don't know. I mean, mine are kind of acting the same when I had the rooster. I mean, I only had the rooster, well, for about five months, but actually the rooster was really keeping an eye on the chickens, and I have four children and one son it decided was a threat. I probably thought the chickens, the female pullets liked him better than them. He would literally open the slider door to come out and it would come running at him and it would just chase him and I don't know what it was. It just wanted to get him, keep him away from the chickens, which was really funny because he's like the best one with them and they all love him and they all come up to him, so I don't know. Okay, so let me see, here we are. Adequate run. Um, ventilation, some people seal up their coops so tight they don't get any air. They really do need a little bit of teeny bit of air. I mean, but the door is usually open and closing during the day, so that should do it. Just don't make it so tight because, like even in the winter when I get to cleaning, you know, I'll clean it several times a year, but when there's a lot of snow, I can't get the wheelbarrow up there. I can't empty it out and clean it out. So what I do is just lay another layer of, um, pine shavings across the top when it starts to get kind of gross and smelly and I throw diatomaceous earth in there too that's the food grade only the food grade they have two kinds one I found out the hard way um, it's almost like tiny little slivers in your fingers I tried that the first time I didn't realize there's a difference there's food grade so we have just the food grade in the store and you throw it in when I clean my coop the whole bottom I throw a layer of this real thin just throw it out there and then lay the pine shavings, do it on their nesting boxes. And what it does is when insects and bugs crawl on it, it slices them open. It just, it doesn't hurt your hands at all. It doesn't, you know, I could stick my hands in there. Yeah, it wouldn't do anything, but with the bugs. So I never have bugs or anything in my coop, which it works great. So it just kind of slices them. And do I, I usually do, but sometimes I don't have it on me and I just take my cup and throw it around and I get it all over me. It doesn't hurt. Yep. How do you handle squirrels or chipmunks or other things that presumably if you have edible stuff around? Um, the chipmunks one time, I happened to see it, a chipmunk was stupid enough to walk in the pen and all the chickens attacked him and killed him. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, they, they, they are, would surprise you. They could be pretty brutal. Like, even like if you have one chicken that gets like a cut or something or got like say attacked by a hawk or whatever and has a cut and they see red, they see blood, they'll go after it and they'll peck it and they'll keep pecking it. Um, as we sell in the store this, we have the spray and this little one, it's called Blue Coat. 
So it's got an antiseptic in it to clean the wound, but don't get this on you. It's like getting a blue Sharpie all over you. I mean, I spray it and then my whole finger is like bright blue when I do it. It, it, what it'll do is make it a dark blue. It'll spray it and it's got the antiseptic in it so it's keeping the wound clean, but it will turn it from red to dark blue and that way the chickens, all of a sudden it's like magic. They won't peck at the chicken, they'll leave it alone. It's just, I've gone in with cuts on my leg and they're all like, I mean, they wouldn't hurt me, but I mean, they're like, ooh, red, you know. Any idea why? Um, probably kill the weak, I don't know. <laughs> I, I just don't know. But. Blue coat's good for when they have a wound and you just spray it with that and none of the other chickens will know that they've got a cut. Okay, so you don't, you don't have to worry about squirrels. I mean, squirrels don't come and eat all of your feed if you're... No, what I do is, um, well, I hang mine during, like if it's nice out during the day, I hang it outside in the summer. In the winter, it stays in the coop all day, but I actually literally have it hanging like this far off the ground and it hangs just so something can't like, mice can't just crawl in and sit in there and eat it all. I mean, it's mice you worry about in the winter, you know, grow, having nests around or around your coop, you don't want that. So I hang mine, and then I have my water on a block just so they don't get all the shavings in it, because in the winter, you really, it's a pain to be changing the water all the time, so. Um, they can, the diatomaceous earth is good too, because I throw it in the pen, and then they'll roll in it, and literally it'll just slice everything around them. And actually, the lice they get, though, is not the same thing as the people head lice. It's totally different kind. So it's not like you'll come in scratching your head. It's a different type. Not something to worry about? Um, if they get it, no. If they get it, you'll give them, you'll probably get them the diatomaceous earth on them and give them some, some kind of, you make a dust bath, they make it like, usually you could do it with sand and ash and diatomaceous earth. And they literally will roll in it and that will take care of it. Yeah, but usually by me keeping that in the base of the coop, I just, I don't have any bugs in there. So, because I think anything that's crawling in there is getting sliced open and it's not making its way to the chickens. So, and I think that's where they would get in is while the chickens are sleeping, but since it just can't even get in the coop, it seems to work really well. So, um, okay, lights. Um, some, um, in the winter too, this is another thing, I do not heat my coop, even though we're in New England. Um, it's probably preferable not to heat the coop because if you ever lose electricity, your chickens will die pretty quickly because they won't be acclimated to the cold. So all the breeds I bring in are definitely winter hardy. Probably best not to heat your coop. The only thing I do different in the winter is this. I have this, it doesn't get hot enough. It won't like catch your coop on fire or anything. It's just a base heater. I have a long extension cord going up from my house and it's just in the winter. Put it down and when it gets below freezing, the water sits on top of it, the waterer, um, it'll keep it just warm enough not to freeze. And that way, you know, they'll still get their water all winter. And I just leave it in there in the coop for the winter and then in the summer, spring and summer, I throw it back in the shed until the following winter. But I don't know, I've had mine for seven years now. It's getting a little rusty looking and all that because they splash water all over, but it still works. So they last a long time. So that you'll definitely need in the winter, just so the water won't freeze up. Um, some people put lights in their chicken coop because they want them to lay more. So in the winter, you know, the way it gets dark at four o'clock and you don't have much light, they're not getting a real lot of light to keep laying eggs. So some people actually put automatic lights in their chicken coop so they'll come on and they'll have more hours of light and they'll lay more eggs. I just, I had, 11 chickens at one point and I was getting like seven eggs a day. I just didn't want any more eggs. I think I had plenty, so I didn't bother doing that. But you can, I mean, if you want, you could set up a light. Yep. So they're fine in the winter until it's cold get them warm? Yeah, and then, yeah. They, what they do is they huddle up on the roosting pole in the winter to stay warm. Uh, you have to change their feed during the winter? <laughs> their feed? Yeah, yeah. yeah they, every time the food runs low, actually this is the feeder. Uh, not, like, diet, like, um, I use the same feed except sometimes in the fall what they'll do is the first two years usually they'll lay eggs right through the winter you know and keep going and then after they're about two years old in the winter all of a sudden you'll see them start like losing a lot of their feathers they molt and they look hideous and they look like they're missing all these feathers and they've all been in a big fight but they haven't they're just missing their feathers and sometimes we have another food called feather fixer it's just got more protein in it 
and what it'll do is their feathers will grow back a lot quicker. But after they're two years old, a lot of them online do this, except for the silkies. They take like a few months off, anywhere from two to three months off in the winter, and they stop laying. And then they'll start up again as soon as they feel like it's more light during the day and getting a little warmer, they start laying again. But my chickens are seven years old and they're still laying, so. And my silkies just kept laying, so. All right, so that's the lights, diatomaceous earth. Uh, number of nesting boxes, they say one for every four chickens. I wouldn't even go by that. Um, when I had 11 chickens, I had five nesting boxes in my coop. They all would use the same one. They would fight over it, and they would push each other out. They would want to get in. I would see two on top of one. They're laying eggs on top of another chicken. They get a favorite one, and then a week later, all of a sudden, they're in a different one. So I do block off some of mine so they don't have to clean them all. But they literally will use the same one. I don't know if they get favorites. And then some of them will do what's called broody. My silkies kind of do that a lot, where they decide that they're going to sit on the nesting box and stay there, and they're going to sit on all the eggs because they're absolutely positive that they're going to hatch. And they have this like little timer in their head. It's like they'll sit there for three weeks. They'll come out and eat food, and they'll get their water, and they'll go back in, and they're just in a really bad mood. If you open it up, they'll squawk at you. My silkies are the best because if I'm letting them out, I'll pull it out of the box, and it's like squawking at me like if there's such thing as chicken swear that's what they're doing to me um, and then after three weeks they just get up and get off the box like oh they're not gonna hatch and meanwhile I'm lifting them up and pulling the eggs out every day so, <laughs> so the chicken knows if it's fertile or not. no they don't because none of those are fertile they just think they are it's just they get in this mood and it's called broody the chickens never mind the eggs. so yeah unless you have a rooster you're not gonna get any baby chicks so sometimes they do just get very territorial. Yeah, yeah, it's called being broody. So silkies kind of are known for doing that. I've had like... But that can happen without actually getting pregnant. Yeah, yeah, that's just something they do. They have it in their head that they're going to try and make these eggs hatch, even though they're not going to happen. <laughs> think on them. Yeah, yeah, they just, yeah, wishful thinking. Um, some people actually, when they have broody chickens, if they're trying to introduce, I've never done this, I've thought of it, but I was afraid. If they're trying to introduce new chicks to the flock, if they have a broody chicken, I've heard this works great. I don't know, I was just afraid to do it. If you go in at night when they're asleep, you could literally, if you have new chicks, put them underneath the chicken and they'll take care of them like they're their own. But I had four children and I thought if that didn't work out real well and they thought that was their chicken and it wasn't there in the morning, I don't know. <laughs> So, but I, if you go on backyardchickens.com, people swear by that way. Do you have a uh, suggestion on how to um, integrate other chickens into your community? Like, yeah, I, I have that in there, but I'll, uh, yeah, I'll answer that. Um, I did that because I had, remember I told you the squished ones came in and my son made me take them home. Um, and actually I was introducing three silkies and a Americana into full-size chickens. Um, so what I did was I put a little netting in like a little corner of the coop and then an, um, another piece of netting across the corner so they could see each other, the corner of the outside pen. And then in the morning I'd pick them up and put them out there and then at night I'd pick them up and bring them back so they could see each other and get used to each other, you know what I mean? And they're so used to it. And if I had them all out around the yard while I was out, I'd bring them all out and they'd just kind of ignore each other. But the big chickens really, really, really liked the chick food, and they were always trying to get in to get the chick food. So after a while, I left like a little crack like that so that the chicks could get out and go in the big pen if they wanted. But if they got scared, they could run back in, and the big ones couldn't get in. And then probably did that for like two and a half weeks, I think. And then one day I came home from work, and all the big chicks were inside this squished area. They'd eaten all the chick food, and all the little chicks were out in the big pen. So I said, OK, it's time. And I pulled it out, and I, I didn't have any problems. But it was a little bit of work, you know, the back and forth and doing that. But it did work, and other people do. They swear by putting them under a broody chicken if you happen to have one at the time. What if they're not chicks? What if they're little chickens, like five months old? Here? I would do the same thing. Just, like, keep an area off for them and then in the coop, too. So they can see each other but not? See each other but not, like, hurt each other. And then they just they get used to each other. I would do that, yeah. But, I mean, it can be done. Okay, fine shavings, heat. Um, and then in the summer, I explained how it, heat, more heat can kill chickens than cold can. So um, when I was trying to decide where to put my coop, 
you know, one neighbor here who ends up now loves my chickens and wishes it was closer because I give them eggs all the time and a neighbor here, I didn't know what to do. I didn't want to bother either one. So I put it way in back of my yard in the middle near the woods, but it's direct sunlight like all day. So what I did for the first couple of years is I just put a tarp across it so they wouldn't, they, you know, would have some shade. And then after that, I got some hops. It took a few years to come in, but that's what it looks like now. That's actually this week. It's growing really fast. So that way they get, they have their coop. There's their run, you know, the pen, the dog kennel. And that way they could get out of the sun for a little bit. So they do need a little bit of shade. I mean, these were stuck right in the middle of the yard, and they would have just been so hot. So... But the tarp worked fine for a few years too. So tarp or whatever growing vine, I have some grapevine leaves on the side just to you know, keep them a little protected from the sun. And it's also good, I've actually had hawks come and land on the fence and literally just sit there and watch them or slam into the side of the fence, testing it to see if they could even get in. So it gives them a little you know, protection and they're not so scared and they don't see hawks flying over anymore because it goes right across the top, so. Yeah, actually a few years ago, one of our customers, actually that's where I got some of my chickens from um, him, Bernie Reddy's, it went in and ripped it open and went in his pen and it killed all his chickens except for one. So that, I think that's unavoidable. I don't know what you could Bernie. do to, yeah, Bernie. I just, that was a tough one, yeah. So there are predators around. I mean, even with me, I did the hardware cloth around and down the bottom so nothing get in. Because even in the winter, I'll see little paw prints around. I know things are trying to get in. They just can't figure out how. So. Pine shavings. The, yeah, I put the diatomaceous earth in the bottom so because they do sit there for a while just so bugs can't come in. And then um, the pine shavings on top of it. And the diatomaceous earth, it's all food grade. I mean, if you Google that and read online, I mean, people have strong feelings about that. Some people feel like it's good for you. We used to have an employee that did that. She'd mix it in water and drink it. What um, so it's, a found, yeah, silicon, uh, like finely ground up dust. Well, when they walk across it, it slices them open. You can't feel it, but if you get the one that's not food grade, it's not a powder, it's not ground so fine, it feels like you have a thousand splinters in your hands. That hurt. But this is so finely ground, you don't, you, I could stick my hand in the bag, you wouldn't feel it. But to bugs, it does. They, you know, get all the tiny edges, so. Okay. For the nesting boxes, what do you use? Um, well, in my coop, you could, if you just have, like, say you're going to use a shed or something, you could buy nesting boxes. We actually have them at the store you just put in. Um, it's just a little privacy for them, a little box, you know, and then I do, I just put the diatomaceous earth and the pine shavings in it. Yeah. But I wouldn't go crazy on getting a lot because really and truly they'll pick a favorite and... The nesting boxes, they're small. They like to squeeze in. Yeah, and then if one doesn't want to wait, they'll just climb on top of the other chicken. <laughs> How do you know it's brooding? I won't get off the nesting box for three weeks. It really won't. And then you try to move it, it just gets really mad. I would pick it up and put it in the pen and it'll just get mad, drink a little water. It's squawking the whole time. It's really angry. It'll squawk, it'll eat, it'll drink, and it'll just walk right back in. Or like if I'm going to clean the coop and one of them is, I'll pull it out and it's just so angry. It'll just stand there and like do chicken swear at me while I'm cleaning the coop because it wants to go back in. <laughs> oh, it's next. Eggs. So. Everyone's different about eggs too. Some people have this thing where if there's any teeny tiny anything on the egg, they throw it out. They feel like it's contaminated. Me, if there's like gross poop on it, I'll throw it out. But if it's not, if it's just dirty or whatever, you know, I clean them. And then if you clean them, they don't have to be cleaned unless it looks dirty. If they're not cleaned and they don't need it, you could leave them on the counter. I mean, they'll be fine for days. And if there is something on it and you clean it, you use warm water, not cold. If you use cold water, it makes it contract and whatever is on the shell, it's gonna suck right in because believe it or not, the shells are very porous. So clean it with warm water, you know, just rub it off. Whatever you use, a towel, just don't use the sponge you use to clean your dishes. <laughs> just use something totally separate that's for that only, nothing else. And then um, 
just make sure it's warm water, not cold. And then once you wash it though, and after it dries, put it in the fridge, because then it will have to be refrigerated. But they keep for a long, long time. And if you've had them in there and you're not sure how long, just put it in water. If it floats, it's not good anymore. That's the easiest way to tell. The uh, fertilizer, put it in the fridge, dies, same as any other. Oh, um, yeah, you need a rooster to have fertile eggs, so... Fertile egg, you can just put it in the fridge, it'll die, and you can eat it like any other egg. I don't, I, yeah, I guess, yeah. Depends on how far along... Long it is, I know, that's what I'm thinking, yeah. <laughs> just like when my chicken ate the snake and I wouldn't eat the eggs for a week. I don't know what I was expecting, a snake to pop out, I don't know, but... You need to get a rooster, they're all going to be <laughs> That, yeah, usually after you have the rooster too, you want chicks and you'd leave them in there and you'd let them stay and get warm and start to develop. If you have a rooster though, you pull them out right away and they're not gonna, you know, if you clean them and put them in the fridge, they'll stop. Um, okay, so that's that. They'll lay anywhere from four to six months of age and it is the most exciting thing when you get your first egg because you're waiting and waiting and then you look and then you look and then one day you see the egg, I'm telling you. I had visions of me like getting my first egg and running through the yard and like falling and smashing it or something, but that didn't happen. I was so excited. <laughs> um, yeah, like I said, soft shelled eggs, you know, you just add oyster shell or, you know, ground egg shells, anything, just to get more calcium in them and then the, they'll be fine. Um, Egg laying, yeah, temperature, like when I've had the hawk or when I, like I said, that hawk like came and almost got my chicken, they all stopped laying for a few days. So stress will freak them out big time with like hawks or things like that. Anything happens, one of my chickens died, they all stop laying for a few days. They actually react to stress and they'll stop laying for a little bit. So, because the one that got attacked by the hawk didn't lay for like two weeks. All the rest started after a couple of days, you know, taking it up. What was that? Where was the rooster? Oh, I only had the rooster a few months and then the neighbors complained. Oh, I'm here to like, they'll attack any chicken. Yeah, that's why that guy that does them at the chicken exchange said a lot of farmers want roosters because they protect their flock. Uh, all right, broody hens. Yeah, color of the comb too. When they get close to laying, the comb on the top of their head will turn darker red. And then they'll do this thing called the chicken song. It is so loud, they'll start bark, 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 like you wouldn't believe, so loud. And you're like, what is going on? And then when it stops, you'll realize there's an egg in the nesting box. They just like to announce it when they've laid eggs. They just really loud. No, no, mine actually usually lay in the morning. Yeah. Okay, and then, um, yeah, sometimes in the afternoon. Yeah, because at night they're just sleeping or they're up on the roosting pole. Yep. Is there any tuning you can do in breeding more or less eggs if you, you know, if you want to not have too much of your little, you encourage egg laying or discourage by um, feed or? Actually, it's like some of the feed too, like, because I think in the winter more too, because they're using a lot of their energy just to stay warm. Um, like, I, the, I swear the weeks I give them oatmeal, I get more eggs that week. It's like, yeah, I think you could play around with their food and if you want more eggs, if you put the light in the uh, coop, you know, and have it going. They say have it going um, earlier in the morning, not at night, because then they might get confused and if they went back out, it'd be dark and they'd kind of freak out in the dark, so. Is that, is that like double or half egg production or how? Um, I did try it and yeah, I mean, you'll get, I was getting a little bit, I was getting more, not a ton, but a little bit more, yeah. Yeah, and they're getting old, and now mine are like seven years old, so, and I'm down to six chickens. Um, you know, and I'll talk about things that could happen. I'm telling you, I had everything happened in the last few months, too. I mean, I had no predator attacks, and then I had the hawk that attacked the one chicken, but she's fine, and she's laying. And then I had another one on the corner of my, um, I don't know how this happened either. So it's during the day. The corner of the coop where the gate meets, um, I went up and there were like feathers all over. Something got her, I, I don't know, hawk, fox, whatever, and just pulled her through. I mean, her body should not fit. It was one of my mini chickens, so one of the big ones they could have never done it. Whatever it did pulled it through and she's totally gone. There were feathers everywhere. And actually the one that got attacked by the hawk, there were feathers everywhere and I looked at her and it looked like she wasn't missing any. I think that when they get stressed, their feathers just come out, but there were feathers all over. And, my husband ran up and looked in the woods. I didn't want to look. He didn't find anything, thank God. Um, so I had that happen. I had the hawk. And then there's a thing called egg bound where um, 
a chicken could like if you see it and it's like on the nesting box and it seems upset or like lethargic and starts leaning over, it could be egg bound. That means there's an egg like stuck and it won't come out. There's like, but not all these chickens I've had have had nothing happen in like seven years and then all of a sudden I'm having all these things happen. And actually one of my silkies that happened to, she wasn't the best layer either, she laid randomly. Um, she was fine one night, like I came home from work and she was the first one to jump out and want to come out and she's still like, I have a little dog now and the dog sometimes chases him. She would chase the dog. She was like my crazy one. So I'd always look for her and I came home the next day. She'd been out the uh, you know, night before, fine, acting normal, eating everything on the ground, all my tomatoes. And then I came the next day and I'm like, oh, where is she? She must be on the nesting box. I opened up, she was dead on the nesting box. So she must have gotten an egg like stuck in her, but she didn't show any of the signs. It wasn't like, oh, I could have soaked her in a warm bath or you know, put preparation H on her, nothing like that, because she showed no signs of it. She was fine the night before. So it kind of just, sudden thing with her so well you know things happen but I haven't had a lot so I mean that's just the what can happen but it's you know not the majority of chickens um, there's things you do they say you soak them in warm water put preparation H on so it's not so swollen and it should come out or olive oil or you know and I've had things where like my dominant chicken my um, buff Warpington was kind of acting like lying around not doing much and she wasn't eating and she's like the biggest pig and I got a little worried and this is just my go-to. I took one of those children's syringes that you just squeeze and the medicine shoots out. It's not like a real needle. And I took olive oil and I held her and put it down her throat. And then like an hour later she was fine. I had a feeling she had something caught in here and it just wouldn't work itself out and that seemed to do the trick. But if you get stuck like go on backyardchickens.com or email me, my email's on there. Um, I love chicken questions so I'll answer any questions you have. Um, anything like that, but it's 99% of the time they're just so easy to take care of and there really isn't that much that goes on with them. You know, it's just, they're easy. Not much goes wrong, but I have to tell you all the things that could go wrong just in case so you'll know what to do. Um, so in the winter when they get bored, I told you I do things like hang cabbage or I'll go on the edge of the woods and I'll take a whole bunch of leaves, throw them in and then get the bird seed with the tiny little round millets and throw it in and they could spend hours scratching through the leaves looking for that little tiny thing and it'll just board them you know you just or I'll hang a suet feeder and put suet in there and they'll just jump up and peck at it and just something to keep them busy you know in the winter or if you're really nice you'll bring them oatmeal <laughs> and then the health problems which we talked about a few of them one of them is called pasty but sometimes I have to take care of that at the store when they come in where they go to the bathroom, but it dries on their bum and it's stuck. And if you don't take it off, it's like a plug. It's literally like a plug on them, they'll die. So you have to take it off. So you just use Vaseline or something like that, put it on it, it'll loosen up, it'll take care of it. And actually one of my chickens is, um, I don't even remember what her original name is, but she had it and the kids just renamed her Pasty. <laughs> so <laughs> that was her name, that happened to one of my chickens. And then the egg bound, I talked about that. Egg eating, you put the plastic golf balls in. Um, the pecking, I talked about. Worms, I've never had that. Uh, even at the store, I don't really, when we have a dewormer in there, I've really, it sits there forever. I mean, not, not many people had it. It um, could occasionally happen, but I mean, if you, you see their poop and you see worms in it or something, there's something called deworming. You put it in the water for the whole flock, and then you have to throw out the eggs for a couple of weeks after that and then they should be fine. But I mean, almost anything you think of that could happen to them, you'll find an answer on Backyard Chickens or email me. Uh, molting, I talked about that where all their feathers will start falling out in the fall and they're just getting ready for the winter. Um, I introducing new chickens to the flock, I talked about that. And cleaning the coop, I do it a few times, yeah, a few times a year and in the winter when you really can't get a wheelbarrow up there to wheel it all the way and throw it in the corner, it makes great compost. So you could always have it in the back and have your little compost pile with all your chicken shavings and poop. Um, and I just do a thorough cleaning, you know, especially in the spring, that's when it's got the thick layer because I've been laying it on. And you just clean it out, I hose it down, you know, clean it out really well and throw the diatomaceous earth in, throw the shavings in and they're good to go. So. I think that was it. The biggest thing is always remember to wash your hands all the time, all the time. You come in, you know, I mean, I even go in and check on them at night to make sure the door went down. 
actually I wasn't doing it for a long time, but since my chicken got pulled, but that was during the day I go and I start checking again. I even look at the coop and I wash my hands. So just make it a habit to always wash your hands. And then I just have like, you know, like those Crocs or whatever, the mud shoes. I keep like right by the door. I don't bring them really in. They're out in the little mud room. Um, that and then a pair in the winter and just if I'm going to walk through the pen or whatever you don't want to bring that in the house so just for sanity you know safety What's the life expectancy of they, they vary by yeah though they say normally like five to seven years so like I've had a couple of mine just kind of I mean they're there now seven years die just one one day and they were just kind of acting uh, for a few days and then they're just gone so I mean I think it's just I bury them, yeah, except for my favorite one. She's got a little painted stone and a little. <laughs> but yeah, I just bury them. Uh, no, they don't. They leave it alone. All the chickens leave it alone. When a chicken dies, actually, you'll notice it'll stay out. Like one of them died inside, and they all were staying outside. They don't want to see it. They get really upset. So, and then they all stop laying for a few days, and so. Yes. Once you get clearance that you have poop and they identify where and you go show where and they come check, is that it with the pound or do they check annually? The um, they say they're going to check, but from everyone I talk to, I, yeah, um, I'm not sure if they really do. I mean, I think they can at any point or they know who has chickens because, you know, you have your permit and all that and it's an annual. Um, is there a fee? There, it's on that oh, sheet right, right there. there yeah, yeah. Yeah, and each town, like I said, each town is different depending on where you live. You just call the Board of Health and find out, you know, what your town will have for regulations because they all are very different. I mean, I know in Lowell they're still trying to get chickens, you know, chicken keeping up there and they won't allow it. And I've been trying to help them because they have to write up papers and whether or not there's people that can give seminars on them so people know what they're doing. I don't, they still don't have it. So every town's different. So any questions? Isn't that hilarious? I love that. That's my little chicken purse and the change wallet that goes with it. <laughs> I bought that actually at a store. Is there any pesticides? No, that's food grade. You could actually, I told you, one of our employees puts it in water, mixes it up, and she drinks it because she said it cleans out your insides. Yeah, so you go online and read diatomaceous earth, it gets so contentious where people are like, oh, everybody should be doing that. And she, yeah, she, she believed in that firmly. So yes, this one says it right on the bag too, food grade. There are other kinds. A lot of people have them like around their pools and stuff that's not food grade, but this one is food grade. And so some people, yeah. So yeah, you definitely, 100%. If there's nothing. Uh, you know what, since we have the chickens too, I don't like, you know, my husband doesn't put down any weed kill or anything in the backyard, because I let mine out, you know, Ooh. and they hang around the backyard, so I don't put anything like that out in our yard. But, I mean, they mostly go for my flower garden. Yeah, yeah, he's complaining the yard looks a mess, and they go in my gardens, and they dig around, and they look for worms, and eat my vegetables, and... Yeah, but they are fun and they all really do have like great little personalities so, and they're so easy to take care of really. Like I have neighbors next door and they're always like, when are you going to go away? Because I'll put the food out and the water out and I say just check and make sure, you know, I show them in the shed where I keep it. Keep, keep your food like in a good trash can with a lid because raccoons, everything wants to get at it. I mean, so I just have it in a regular trash can with a tight lid on it and I keep my food out there. And I always have my, the millet, the bird seed, because I like that. And a lot of people don't give them cracked corn. They call it scratch. And chickens go crazy over that. But I only give mine some. That's not good, because if you just give them that all the time, that's not enough protein. They won't really be laying many eggs. That's more of a treat. Like maybe in the winter, throw some out there when there's no bugs and there's nothing to scratch around for. But. Um, you know, it, it all depends on your chickens. Like, I'll fill this up. Actually, it's been last while because it's spring now and a lot of bugs are out and stuff. I'll fill this out, and I have six chickens now. I haven't refilled it, and it's getting low, but I haven't filled it in like a week now.
But it depends on like how, like it depends on when you cook, who likes your food, who doesn't. It depends on how many leftovers they're getting from me too. So this will be their main food because it's got all that protein and that'll help them, you know, keep laying eggs. But they do get like my table scraps or, you know, if I don't have many that week, much, you know, that they'll eat more of this. So even like peeling apples, peeling carrots, shredding my, all that goes in my chicken coop. They get, they get the weeds from my vegetable garden, they get everything. So it lasts a long time, yeah. But they're very easy and they're really, really a lot of fun. So any questions? So for Chelmsford, how, I see if you have less than 40,000 square feet, you have to get permission. How flexible are they? Or? They are, I would call and you call and find out. They'll let you know because what they do is look up your plot plan and all that and they'll tell you how many you could have. Okay. What was that? That's your entire property. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Is, are they, is like as far as 50 feet from the nearest property, are they meet that sort of mandate you have at least 100 by 100 lot? Is that right or are they more flexible than that? I think they're more flexible than that. Yeah, I think they definitely are. And that was even me trying to decide what to do because I didn't want to bother one neighbor or the other. I thought they'd be really smelly. It really is. I don't know if it's a diatomaceous earth. It doesn't really stink bad except maybe in the spring after I've been, you know, it needs the cleaning. But yeah, it's just, it's. I don't, that's why I put mine in the middle. And then I was covering it with a tarp for, you know, in the sun a little bit, but it, it works out fine. Yeah, you can make it work. Who doesn't smell? Um, well, I think if you don't clean your coop hardly ever and you just let it pile up, yeah, then it will, but. Did you say you store it or did you save it? Oh, I throw it in the corner of my yard and I like may, turn it into like compost. Yeah. So yeah. it doesn't really yeah, do you have to be, uh, I guess, just for the chickens, or will chickens hang out? Like, do you have a combo dog house slash coop, or do they need their own uh, area? Their own, like, what do you mean by like have a dog and? Yeah. So, okay, so if you could, if you make you make a large shed and have have be the, and I mean, you don't have dogs and chickens be best friends, for example. Yeah. Hang out in the same uh, locations, or because what you showed on your picture was us, you know, the, the run was completely fenced in. Yeah, because it's attached to the coop, kind of, you know, with the hole cut out and attached to it. I did that, so that's like the their little run, so they could come and go. But, I mean, like, and it depends, too, when they're baby chicks, and if you have a dog and your dog's around it all the time, it'll be used to it. I mean, when I had my lab, she was great with them, you know, just once, maybe, because one of them, like, flew in front of her, and her retriever kicked in, and she got up, and I saw the tail go straight, and my son saw it, too, and he just, like, tackled her, and she kind of came to like wait those are my friends you know kind of thing so but she was great with them she'd lie around they'd walk over her everything so as long as they're like used to them when they're little she actually didn't like the smell of them I don't know like the smell when they were babies she'd smell and like go like that like she just didn't like it so it sounds like it's too late to start chickens this year I'm not, um, not getting any more in Agway this year but you have plenty of time to research what you want and then let me know if there's a breed you know that you want that I don't have on the list. And that's what I do do. What I do is I have forms and like those breeds you saw, I have a form. And then people fill it out ahead of time because I actually have to order them really early. It used to be you get them in like three weeks. Now it's like months. If I order like the first week of January, they'll tell me the first date is like first week of April, that's the quickest I could get them. So I always make my orders at the beginning of January, I'll make one for the first week of April, one for the first week of May. And then I have forms that people could fill up right until like the day they're coming in because just doing it this many years, I know what kind of breeds are gonna go and what's not and I figure what's pre-order and then I always have like well over 100 extras. So you could either do, like I said, pre-order and you know what breed you're getting or just come in, you know, when they come in. It's always on the website, Facebook page, the date they're coming in. Come in and get what you want. But like things like the silkies, they go really quick. I usually don't have many extras of those. You know, people order like a whole bunch and a couple of silkies and yeah. How often do you change the lunches? You have to rake them up and yeah, what I do is yeah, I just have a rake and like one of those stall shovels and I throw it in at my wheelbarrow and Put it out in the corner of the yard. No, oh, no, no, no. Maybe when they were new and I first got them, I did it a lot more. But no, it, it. I would say probably maybe every 
in the like spring to the fall, maybe every six weeks or so. And then in the winter, like I said, I can't get out, you know, I can't get the wheel bell out there. So I just throw more fresh shavings over the top, like a little diatomaceous earth, more shavings. That way the first cleaning in the spring is big. Yeah. Yep. How big is the minimum that you um, like most people start with five and then that way maybe if they get like I did you get a rooster or whatever you still have four because you always want them to have some to huddle up with in the winter you know to keep warm so that's usually that's what like most people start out with five or six and then it grows and you have no control over it you will just get more cute. yeah <laughs> having the rooster you know, not a lot of people like the roosters, is that because they multiply? It's because neighbors don't want you to have them and they'll complain. They don't crow in the morning, they crow all day, off and on, all day. Like in mine, I didn't know it was starting at four in the morning. And they'll just off and on all day, it's not just in the morning. So, I mean, that was kind of my deal with the neighbors, you know, I'm not going to bother you, it's, you know, I'm having the coop, I'll give you eggs, but I mean, I didn't want them upset with me. So. There's plenty of people that have roosters and they have no problem with it and the neighbors don't mind. My neighbor did, so. That's. So it's four or five chickens, how many eggs do you get? So you probably, no, when they're like the first couple of years, you'd probably get like at least two, I'd say. Sometimes three, yeah. Yeah. Or each chicken? No, no, just in whole, in total, yeah, yeah. But it's a lot of eggs, I mean, they add up. Yeah. But you always have neighbors that are happy to take them. So, And that does make it convenient when you want to go away. I mean, you'll always have someone that'll say, I'll check on them. You know, and all they do really is just check the water and food and then collect the eggs. Yeah. So, so if you think of any questions after, just email me. So. Okay. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.